Hi everyone, Jeff Robson from Access Analytic, and today we're going to be talking about how to do corkscrew calculations in financial models using the new Excel Dynamic Array formulas. A lot of people think it's not possible to do corkscrew calculations using dynamic arrays, but that just sounded like a really interesting challenge to me. So I'm going to show you how we can go about doing that today. In the example that we're going to look at, I've got a couple of different ways of modeling corkscrew calculations. Now these are not true corkscrew calculations, let me just say that up front. I'm going to be essentially simulating corkscrew calculations using dynamic arrays. For my first example, we have uh, 16 periods in my current um, very simple example. And if I scroll down here, we'll come back to those tables in just a moment. But down here, if I just look at uh, corkscrew example number one, what I have is an opening balance here, which has just been hard coded in. And then I have a series of random number uh, calculations, which have been entered. They're both exactly the same. So I've got some additions and some, some subtractions. So these are just random numbers being generated, 16 random numbers going across the page between 100 and 500. Below this, I have another series of random numbers being generated. And these random numbers go between uh, 100 and 150. All right, so that gives me some numbers for additions and subtractions coming through. The clever part here is in the array formulas that we've used here. So what we've done here is we've got a uh, opening balance plus and essentially a sum ifs or a couple of sum ifs. So basically what we're doing is summing all of the additions plus all of the subtractions where they are essentially less than or equal to the period number here, minus one. So what that means is basically what I'm doing to calculate this number here, I'm taking this value of 500 and say 500 plus all of the values in additions and subtractions to the left of period two. Then a very similar kind of sum if to calculate all of my uh, closing balances here. So again, if my period number is zero, then it puts a zero. Otherwise, it takes the number here plus uh, all, of the all of the additions and all of the subtractions to date up until this particular point. So if I look at an example over here, how do we calculate this value of 1312? Well, it's the 500 plus all of those values. So you can see the total down there is 812 plus 500 gives me 1312. And if I add up all of those, I get the same value of 1312. So this is one way of kind of simulating corkscrew calculations. Now, obviously, if you go further across the page, the further and further you go, the more work the sum if has to do. But essentially, it gives us a way of doing a corkscrew calculation. So this might be a balance sheet um, example in a financial model. If I come down here, I, I wanted to do a second example and I wanted to make this a little more interesting down here because what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to mix and match actuals with budgets and or actuals with forecast or whatever. For this part, I've got a table up the top here which has all of my uh, period numbers and it has all of the balances for this particular balance sheet account, whatever it might be. And what I've done on the side of that is I've calculated a movement um, for each of those. So if the period is zero, then just give me the balance. Otherwise, the balance minus the cell above effectively is what that offset function is doing. So this gives me a movement for each period as well. And I'm going to be using that um, very shortly. With my budget, I've just, again, set out a budget for periods zero through to 16. And in here, I've got a bunch of just hard-coded additions and hard-coded subtractions. What I do down here is, first of all, to get my um, opening, oh, my actual balances, sorry. Um, all I'm using is the transpose function, very cool function. If you're not familiar with that, just transposes a row into a column or vice versa. So in this case, I'm transposing a column of numbers from the top of the table into a row of values which will stretch across the page. I've got a very simple if formula in here, which just says uh, if my period number is less than my actual, then put actual, otherwise put budget. My opening balance here is essentially uh, the same as what we had in the previous example. My closing balance is also essentially the same as what we had in the previous example. So those parts haven't changed. 
and it's the stuff in the middle that is slightly different. To be able to mix and match actuals with budgets, I wanted to basically take, if it's an actual month, I want the actual numbers to show up down here. But if it's a budget number, so I want it to take the previous value, transfer it up to here, and then start bringing in my budgeted uh, additions and subtractions. It took a little bit more thinking in order to make this one work, but essentially what I ended up doing was I said, if my period number is zero, then put zero. Otherwise, basically, if I'm before my, uh, my actuals period, so my actuals period at the top here, we said there are five periods of actuals at the moment. So if I'm before period five, then do one transpose, which is transposing the actual balance and the movement column in, in that table at the top there. Otherwise, do a different transpose, so transpose my additions, so coming from this table. So I'm doing two transposes uh, depending on where I am in the table. So one will transpose the movement from here, the other transposes the, the additions from here. Now, here's the really clever part. When I get out here to period six, it's not transposing my values from this point onwards, it's transposing them from period number six onwards. So it automatically knows, the dynamic array formulas automatically know which period they're in. So I'm in period six here, and it transposes from period six in my budget table onwards. Now, I, when I saw that, I was absolutely amazed by that. I was like, this formula is so clever. Like you're transposing the first one. Okay, that one seems pretty straightforward, but then to just simply do another transpose and it automatically knows where in the table it needs to pick up from and what figures to show. I was um, particularly blown away by that and thought it was absolutely amazing. All right, I'm not sure if you're like me, but maybe. My second one down here to do the subtractions is pretty similar. All I'm doing here is just putting in a zero if it's actuals and then bringing in the subtractions from up here if we're not in the actuals. Thanks very much, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, I hope that's useful for you. Cheers.